In this video, we're going to go through a pretty difficult, but a pretty common as well, question relating to moments and equilibrium forces. So just to start with, um, let's start by labeling all the forces acting on the diagram. It tells you there's a uniform rod, so straight away, uniform means that all the weight is at the center. Now, what is weight equal to? Well, weight is just the mass multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. Because it's also giving you the mass of the rod, um, it also tells you the length of the whole rod, that is 6 meters long. That means that three meters along the rod, let's label it, there's weight acting vertically downwards. And that's a weight of the mass of 10 multiplied by g, 9.81. Oh, sorry, I got mixed up with the physics. It's 9.8 for A-level maths. It tells you it rests in equilibrium. Okay, that's very important. Now, with, with equilibrium, there's three things that you want to think about with these nine mark, seven, eight mark questions. Step number one, you want to use the fact that the resultant force is zero vertically. Step number two, you want to use the fact that the resultant force is zero horizontally. And step number three, you want to use the fact that clockwise moments are actually equal to anti-clockwise moments. Using these three will allow you to form the relevant equations and everything sort of fits together like a puzzle. But before you do that, you have to label all the forces on the diagram. Because there's contact between uh, this rod and A, the ground at A, there's going to be a reaction force perpendicular to the ground. Let's label that R A. Because there's contact between the rod and C, there's going to be a reaction force between um, the rod and um, at C. And let's call that R C, just to separate it from the reaction force at A. It also tells you A C is four meters long. Let's label that in a different color because everything's getting a little bit messy here. So this distance AC is 4 meters. On top of that, it tells you the angle between AB is theta, where tan of theta is 0.4. What you might want to do is just find the value of theta because it looks like you're going to have to deal with that angle later on. So let's just quickly do that to the side. So inverse tan, making sure your calculator is in uh, degrees mode, by the way, is equal to 21.8 degrees. It says, given that the rod is on the point of slipping, that means it's still in equilibrium because it hasn't slipped yet. There's no motion yet. One thing you do have to note, by the way, is the fact that, well, if this was to slide, which way would it slide? It would slide that way, right? Meaning friction, because um, it is on a rough ground, friction would act in this direction. Now, what is friction equal to? It's equal to mu r, where r is the reaction force at a, and mu is the coefficient of friction. So let's call that... Um, well, has it given you the coefficient of friction? Oh, that's actually what we need to find. So it's equal to mu multiplied by the reaction force at A. Now we finally labeled all the forces in the diagram. You might be thinking, okay, is there no reaction, sorry, friction at the peg? There actually isn't because it's a smooth peg where there's no friction acting. Friction only acts on a rough surface. Let's now form all these relevant equations. So let's think of all the vertically upward forces. There's the reaction force at A. Um... Are there any other vertically upward forces? You have to be very careful actually because um, this angle here is the same equal to this angle here. And so there's a component of the reaction force at C which is acting vertically upwards. You do have to take into account of that. The component touching the angle is always cos. So we say going upwards is RC cos theta. So we say RA plus RC cos theta is all equal to the downward forces acting on the object. What downward forces act on the object? Well, it's the weight, 10g. Is that pretty much it? Um, yes, it is. All right. Um, we, we won't really bother putting 21.8 into this yet because we still, we're still going to have two unknowns in the equation. So that means that we have to um, go further, use steps two and three to hopefully find one of those unknowns first, and then it'll help us find the other variable. Um, moving on. It tells us resultant force, so we've used number one so far. Let's use number two now. The resultant force in the horizontal direction is zero. That means that all the force is acting to the right, which is the um, frictional force. What other force is there? Um, no other force acts to the right. But you have to be very careful because the reaction force at C has a component to the left. Now, the component that doesn't touch the angle, what I mean by touching the angle is like here, it touches the angle. That's why it's caused. The component that doesn't touch it is sine. But that's acting to the left. So all the forces to the right, which is friction, is equal to all the forces to the left, which is RC sine theta. Okay. Um, almost there. 
Let's now form the third equation. So the third equation tells us clockwise moments are equal to anticlockwise moments. Let's take A as our pivot. The reason I picked A is because there's multiple forces acting on A. And when forces act on the pivot, you don't need to take into account of the moment of those forces because the distance from the pivot is just zero. So let's take moments about A. All right, we can say that um, one thing you have to be careful of is that the force has to be perpendicular to the um, rod that you're taking it from. So you can say that reaction force at C multiplied by the distance of that reaction force from the pivot, which is four meters. And again, because it's perpendicular to the surface, that's fine to take it, is equal to, you have to be very careful with the weight actually, because this weight is not perpendicular. It's at an angle. If we formed um, this incident line here, this angle here would also be theta. And do you remember how I kept saying that the component touching the angle is always cos? We can say that the component that is perpendicular to the um, rod is 10g cos theta. So we can say it's equal to 10g cos theta, all multiplied by the distance of um, where the weight acts from the pivot, well, that's 3. So we can say 4rc equals 30g cos theta. Now we can actually calculate this because we know our g is, it's 9.8, we know theta is 28, 1.8, so we can rearrange and calculate for rc. Everything now is going to fit together like a puzzle, you see. So rc is equal to 30g cos of 21.8, all divided by 4, which is then equal to, I'm just going to very quickly do this, 30 times 9.81, um, Oh, very sorry, I just need to quickly respond to a text. Sorry about this. Um, all right. Um, yeah, 30, 30 times 9.8 times cos of the angle that I mentioned, which is 21.8, all divided by four is equal to 68.2 degrees. Sorry, Newtons, 68.2 Newtons. All right, now that we found the reaction force at C, we can put into this equation to find the reaction force at A. So that's what I mean when I say it fits like a puzzle. You can say that the reaction force at A is 10G take away RC, which we just found, 68.2, multiplied by cos of the angle, 21.8. Um, putting all of that into the calculator, so we have um, 10G um, take away what we just found, cos of... 21.8 is all equal to 34.6 newtons. Great. Now that we have the reaction force at A is 34.6 and we have the reaction force at C is 68.2, um, we can point to this equation and we can rearrange for the coefficient of friction. So that's what I mean when I say that once you find all three or use all three facts of what you know about objects in equilibrium, then you can sort of play about with them and you'll find the answer. So RC sine theta is, well, RC is 68.2, multiplied by sine of the angle, uh, 21.8, all divided by um, the reaction force at A, which is equal to 34.6. You put all of that into your calculator. So we have 68.2 multiplied by sine of 21.8, all divided by the answer that we just got, and it's equal to 0.731. Just as a rule of thumb, your coefficient of friction should always be between 0 and 1, just so you know you're along the right lines. But yeah, that's the final answer, and all this working out will definitely get you the three nine marks, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching the video. Quite a difficult question, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like me to go through any similar questions. Thanks for watching.